Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today I want to do my conclusion on the Femi drone and the flight test. The flight test you're going to see at the end of this little short bit has been recorded with everything stock. So all I've done is calibrated the compass out of the box, charged the battery and everything was stock. No firmware updates, I haven't adjusted the camera settings or anything. So what you're going to see is what you would get if you bought it and just took it out of the box and flew it the first time. So, one thing I didn't discuss with you the other day when I did the other part was I didn't show you how the battery charged and that's important now, let me show you. So on the bottom of the battery you've got a port here and in here plugs in a standard balance connector and the other end of the balance connector plugs in to this charger. Okay. Right, there's two things wrong with this. It's only ever going to charge it to 12.6 volts. Okay. In, and not the high volt capacity. But more importantly on mine, this charger does not work. So I had this plugged in for maybe three hours. Because I wanted to, to fly it stock, see what battery time you were going to get with it stock. And just this charger. But it wouldn't charge it up. So I give in after three hours. There's a couple of options you can do, you can buy, if you look on Banggood's page, you actually have a link to another charger, you're going to have to buy it 13 quid. But if you've got a hobby grade charger, things are much easier. So I'm just going to show you really quickly, it's not a DIY video or anything like that, but it feels like it could be. So, this is a standard 3S LiPo balance lead extender. They're about 5 for 4 quid on eBay. You need to plug one end into here. And then on the other end of this, I have tapped into the black and red outer wires. So negative and positive. Make sure it's the outers. And put a JST connector on. So I've soldered into there and put a JST connector. Which now gives me this. So this means I can plug this into my battery. This into my ISDT charger. Or any charger that is compatible with high volt batteries. And then I simply connect... You can use any type of connector, you can just put plugs, balance, you can just put plugs straight on the end, that into there, and that plugs into my charger. So simply, I do that. Charges really quickly, but also the main thing is I'm getting the full voltage and full capacity. Okay, so what I can tell you is the flight test I've just done, I flew for about, you're not going to get 14 minutes of video, but I flew for about 14 minutes, and I think I had something like 37, 38% left in the battery and I messed about with it calibrating and stuff at the beginning so yeah battery life is quite good so that's what you'd need to do or buy another type of charger I hope that makes sense if not just leave me a comment down below and I'll try and send you some details of how to do it so the drone itself how does it fly so you're gonna see the flight footage video coming up the camera quality to me is absolutely amazing for the cost of the drone it really is a nice quality image you get out of it better than I expected to be honest it's not up to the standard of a spark but it's not a million miles behind it it flies like a dream like it's on rails this thing flies so nicely it's untrue it's got very slight drop I thought the drop was worse than you'll see at the beginning of the video it drops slightly in right hand turns it doesn't seem to drop on left um, I think it's that way around but You'll see it fly really, really nicely. In sport mode, it's very, very lively indeed. But even in normal mode, this thing doesn't hang about. Really is nice. You'll see in the video, you get the chirping noise, which is synonymous with Femi drones. The 4K drone I've got does exactly the same. And I believe in the software update that's going to be taken away. But I don't know because I haven't updated the firmware. The next video I'll do for this, I'll update the firmware and I'll also tell you what it's like flying with the goggles. Because the only negative, the only couple of negative points is obviously the battery charger and the fact that this screen is difficult to see, which I knew it would be, and I think I mentioned in part one. And I had, didn't fly with goggles. I managed to fly it with screen, don't get me wrong, but I didn't fly it with goggles today. Next time I'll have goggles because I can't have the goggles, the hat cam and everything else, and it's far too confusing for me. So the next video I'll fly it with the goggles on and I'll go much further in distance. All in all. I can't not recommend this drone. This thing is amazing for the price it costs. For 230 the best thing I can say is just go buy one. It's as simple as that. Buy it. 
if you get if you see one on offer someone's actually got it in stock buy it it's worth the money you will not be disappointed it really is that nice a drill the fact that I can fly it with goggles on is going to be a massive plus for me. Some people might not want to fly it with goggles. I suffered very little breakup on the screen. I had the glitching that you get on 5.8 gigahertz. Apart from that, it was fine. If you had some kind of sunshade on this, it'd probably be great. Um, but like I say, for me, I'm not that bothered. The only thing, you, the only thing that has on this thing that is not absolutely perfect, in my opinion, is return to home was good for three or four meters off. You can see in the video. But again, I haven't updated the firmware, and I believe we have to firmware update. That got a lot better. So I've waffled on enough. Watch the video that's coming up. I've recorded it on my GoPro so you can see how it flies. I've also recorded it on the drone itself. And as I say, it's in 1080, 30, everything standard. The only thing it's set to is super fine, which is 60 megabits per second. When I put the SD card out and put the file onto the file image converter, it says it's 60, well, 59.8 megabits per second. You can't fault that. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Okay, so let's get ready to take off. So like I said in the review, this is completely stock. Everything's stock. The camera settings are completely stock. I've calibrated the compass and that's all I've done to it. So we're going to go into the settings. And we're going to do an auto takeoff. Well, as you can see, it goes up a bit higher than. Let's just bring it down a little bit. Looks really stable. So the noise you can hear is the typical chirp you get from a. Uh, the 4K does the same noise, and as you can see, it vibrates slightly. It doesn't affect the picture on the 4K, so I'm presuming it won't on this. I believe in the software update, so there is a fix for that. As you can see, it's moved from the mat, but not far. So let's just take it out a little bit. Let's just fly it around. See how much it drops on the altitude? Not at all. So it doesn't drop on, turns that way. And it does drop on turns strangely to the left. Let's just try that again. Let's turn the other way. Okay, so when you're turning right, it looks like it drops slightly, and turning left, it doesn't, but it is quite slight. It's not a vent, it's not like the Xeno or anything like that. It does seem to fly really, really nice. Let it lock back in again to its GPS. As I say, this is a stock setting, so I'm just going to let you have a look at the picture you can see on the screen. You're going to be difficult to tell this because I'm in the sun. There's no, I'm not wearing goggles. I'll do the goggles on the next flight. This is just a test to see how decent it flies. So let's start the video. Long press the button on the back. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but it started recording. So this is where the test, the real test is. Let's see how good the video looks. Let's just go out a little bit. Just fly it around. Now, your screen, you're going to get break up every now and then. Or glitches, as they call, because it's 5.8 gigahertz. This is not a digital image. But the massive advantage you get over Wi-Fi, of course, is the range is much, much better. And with goggles, it'll be even better with a decent set of antennas on. I can tell you already that it flies absolutely superbly. It's very, very smooth. The screen's going to be the biggest problem with this one because... It's not that sunny today. It is a sunny day to be fair. It's a sunny winter's day, but I'm struggling to see that screen already. But like I say, I'll probably be flying this mainly with goggles, so let's get it up in some height there. Let's take her out. Let's get some distance there. I'm not doing a, a range test or anything like that today. That's 150 meters. As I say, I'm not range testing this today. The only thing I really want to do, other than fly this today, is do the return to home test. 
to make sure that all works well. It's so smooth to fly though. I can't tell you what the video looks like obviously until I get home and put it on the computer but it does fly really 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 nice it's returned to home out so it's 114 meters away and 64 meters high I don't know if you can see that looking good see how close it gets to the mat so if it obviously is going to hit something when it's coming down, I won't obviously let it land fully, but... Looks like it's going to be a little bit away from the mat. But not bad.
So it was going to come down a bit further away from the map. So yeah, a couple of, a good few metres away, actually two or three metres away, which is a little bit disappointing, but not horrendous by any means. It would have probably hit the car there, so. But nothing that's going to cause me a major issue. This thing flies so smooth. 